What's up YouTube, great to have you back. Nice to see you studying SQL. Today I have a hard SQL interview question for you asked by IBM. You have been asking for hard questions. I guess some of you have been getting pretty good at SQL over time. So let's take a look at this one together and break it down. Now this one's called Friday Purchases. It's on Strata Scratch, marked as hard as I said and asked by IBM. And the task mentions IBM in the first sentence. It says IBM is working on a new feature to analyze user purchasing behavior for all Fridays in the first quarter of the year. For each Friday separately, calculate the average amount users have spent per order. The output should contain the week number of that Friday and average amount spent. Now, pretty short question, but marked is hard, so let's not underestimate it. Let's take a look at the table we have, maybe user purchases. Let's preview that. It has a user ID and the date of the purchase, the amount spent and even the day name. So the weekday of the date, which we could also get with a separate function, but it's in there, so we'll take it. And in terms of the expected output, we want to have the week number. So week one would be the first week of the year in January. And the mean amount would be the average amount users have spent per order. Keep in mind, this is still for Fridays only. So let's go over it again. New feature to analyze user purchasing behavior for all Fridays in the first quarter of the year. So it's only gonna have week numbers for week one, uh, for quarter one, Q1. And it's only for Fridays in that quarter and yeah, we're gonna calculate the average order amount, but we're still gonna assign the week number instead of the actual date of the Friday, if that makes sense. So let's maybe sum up what we need here. Let's put on some comments. So we want this for each Friday in Q1, we want the average amount users have spent per order. That's how it's put in the problem statement. And the output should contain the week number of that Friday and the average amount spent. Okay, so as we go through our solution, we can kind of tick off that checklist up here. So it's always good to lay out your solution, especially in a live interview, to keep the interview engaged and know what you're doing just to be on the same page. So let's break this down. We only have one table called user purchases. So we're going to select from that table, put that in here. And we will select, we surely will select the mean amount. So the average of the purchases. Let's preview the purchase table again. Yeah. Mm. There it is, okay. So the average amount spent will give us the average on a given day or for a week. But we want this for Q1 only and we want this for Friday only. So we could either do this. We could say where day name is Friday. This way we will only calculate that for Fridays. And then, yeah, let's just have the date in the in our output for now and group by that date to have it in there. So we will get this amount, this amount, this amount, this amount. If we compare this to the expected output, we have a match for week number two, we have 742.5 for this week four, we have 424 and so on. 
But the thing is, we do have gaps in there. So we don't have week number one. We don't have week number three because apparently we only have purchases on Fridays in those weeks and on those dates. So in order to include every week, we need to change this where filter or basically remove it. So instead of having that condition in here, let's just calculate the average but only if it is a Friday, if you're following. So case when the day is a Friday, then we want to take the amount spent into our average and else we're gonna have null and null is not going to contribute to the average, but in a week where there's no Friday, let's say the first week, we would still go through the data and see there's no Friday and calculate a value. And that way it will be in our output. Otherwise, like we did before, we wouldn't have it in our output, but we want that. So let's run that, see what it gives us. It gives us null values, which are just empty here in the output, but we got closer to what we want. Now, let's think about how to fix this. So I think the null values we can just wrap this in a coalesce function and replace null values with zero in our output and we'll, it will put a zero in here instead. So we took care of that. But we still want, we don't want the date, we want the week number in here. So in order to do that, we will extract the week from the date using the extract function. And we will also group by that same thing. Because right now I still, we, we haven't really gone through the whole week. We've, as we group by date, we calculate that for every day, but we want it based on the week. And yeah, as you can see, we have the week number, we have the mean amount of spend. Let's call that mean amount, sorry for, going back and forth a bit. Let's also, also rename that to week number. And it should look better. We don't have the same output here. It doesn't say that we need to order by the week number, but let's do that anyways. So we're gonna order by that in ascending order. So we'll have the lowest week number first. And this looks very close to our expected output actually. So that's awesome. Let's see. So we have the week number 52 in there, which is odd. You wouldn't expect it to be in there. It's like the last week of the year. But if we took a look at the calendar, I think this is 2021 data. I took a look at the calendar before and the last day of the last week of 2022 is actually January 1st because it's a Sunday. So the first week of 2023 starts on a Monday, but it's the 2nd of January. So that's something to keep in mind. Apparently they don't want that in the output because if I submit it here, then the solution is incorrect because I have that entry. And yeah, as that week 52 in 2023 only has one day, 1st of January, which is a Sunday, we will never get the Friday sale, right? Because there's no Friday in that week in 2023. So what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna first of all, make sure we only use data from Q1 in 2023 by saying extract quarter from date equals one. So that means it's the first quarter. And yeah, it doesn't necessarily say 2023 in here. So we're just gonna leave it as first quarter of the year. But then in order to fix the final problem of having 52 in there, we can just filter by the week number. It's a bit hacky, 
and they would probably be fine with just having this output because it includes all the information they wanted a bit more. But in order to get rid of that, we could say the quarter should be Q1 and the week number. Let's take the exact function again. It should be smaller or equal to 13 because that's the last week we have in there and this will get rid of 52. Yeah, but that's our solution. This question is a bit tricky. I'm actually going to downvote this because I don't like the week 52 issue and hard coding this week filter. And I don't think that's really the point of the question. The point of the question is getting the week from the date, being able to calculate the average only for Fridays and then calculating something even though there's no Friday data in that week. Now, this works, but if we didn't have any purchase data for a given week, then it wouldn't even show up in the output. So if in week three, there were no purchases on any day, on any weekday, not just Fridays, we would not have a value in here because yeah, we just wouldn't have transaction data for that. So yeah, that could be tricky. So if the data would look like that, our solution wouldn't work, we wouldn't have this row in here but if you're working on a big service you can kind of expect there to be some purchase in a given week on a, in a whole week so it's a bit about nuance and you can speak about all that during the interview with your interviewer and i think it's going to make a good impression to actually make assumptions that make sense to apply some common sense so i think you're all good there and it's still a good question to practice and I think we broke it down well. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. I'm going to leave a link to this question to start a scratch if you want to try it out. If you get a subscription, you can help out the channel because I get a commission through the sponsored link. So be sure to check it out if you're interested. Apart from that, check out some more videos on the channel. We have a bunch of playlists on lead code, easy, medium and hard, SQL 50 on lead code and start a scratch interview problems based on which company they're tagged for. So. Keep an eye out for those. I'm going to link these as well. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.